can, just be seated in that attitude of prayer in the anointing there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And go to, with me to Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to go back to what I was, what I was on this morning concerning this. Amen. As somebody needs to hear this tonight. Hallelujah. And since most of you didn't get to hear it this morning, Luke chapter 5 and verse 1, and it says, It occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, He was standing by the Sea of Galilee, and He saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets. And it says, And getting into one of the boats the one that belonged to Simon Peter, he requested him to draw away a little from the shore. Then he sat down and continued to teach the crowd from the boat. So what did he do there? He, he, Jesus was smart. He knew that if I can, because when you're standing in front of just a crowd of people right there, you know, there's only just a few rows of people that are going to be able to hear you. But he knew if I back up onto the water and I use the water as an amplification system, the whole crowd of people is going to be able to hear me. So he thought, you know, I'm going to use Peter's boat. And, he's, you know, and he told Peter, just, if you would, just, just come back a little bit so I can teach the crowd. And so, of course, Peter's thinking, yeah, I, I, I want to help Jesus, right? I want to help Jesus, you know, reach these people. Amen. So they can hear the gospel. Amen. But it wasn't just about this passage of Scripture isn't really... What, what, about what Jesus was teaching, because it doesn't even tell us what Jesus was teaching. But it was about what God was going to do for Peter. Amen? It was about teaching the people, obviously, but it was more than that. It was really about what, what God was about to do for Peter and, and his friends. And so it says, when he had stopped speaking, um, he said to Peter, Now put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. And Simon Peter answered him, now he be, kind of begins to, <laughs> to argue with Jesus. Anybody ever argued with God before? You know, <laughs> right? No, not, none of us, right? No, never. <laughs> but people do it all the time. You know, they know God is telling them to do something. Hey, step out a little bit. You know, do this. Trust me. As I was saying, you know, this morning, we, anytime God asks us to do something, it's because he wants to engage our faith because it's faith that pleases God. And it's our faith that connects us to the supernatural, right? Because something supernatural is about to happen here. It's our faith that connects us to the supernatural. Amen. And, uh, but yet he begins to, you know, try and reason it out. You know, Master, we toiled all night, exhaustingly, and caught nothing in our nets. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. But remember, Peter was a fisherman, right? I mean, Jesus wasn't a fisherman. Jesus was, if anything, a carpenter. But Peter and, you know, and his brother Andrew and, and James and John, they were the fishermen. They knew all about fishing. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, Master, you know, like all night, you know, and we caught nothing. We're just washing our nets, getting all the seaweed and, you know, and the sandals out of our nets. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was all they caught. But he realized, you know what? This is Jesus. And, and remember, Peter and, and everybody, they're not actually even following him, but they obviously had heard enough and, <clears throat> and seen enough, and just because of the fact that he was the teacher, that I should listen and I should just do what, what he's saying. Amen? And so he says, When he had done this, they caught a great number of fish as their nets were at the point of breaking. Whoa. Whoa. And so much so that they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. So it wasn't just, remember, God doesn't just want to supply our need. He wants to abundantly supply us. He wants to supply us so much that we, we, we can't even contain it all for ourselves. So much sure that we have to be like, hey, why don't you come over here and l let me give you a little bit of this. Right? Right? Let me, let me share some of this blessing. Let me share some of this wealth. Let me share some of these resources with you. Amen. That's God's plan for us. I mean, think of it. Jesus could have just been like, yeah, hold on, Peter. Um, I saved a couple of fish from you. I was fishing a little earlier before, you know, I was preaching. And he, here's a fish for you and for Andrew and for Simon, you know, and for uh, James and John. Right? And now you can go home and eat because I know you're hungry. 
He didn't just give him a fish. He's like, listen, I'm, you, you help me preach the gospel? Now watch. Watch what I'll do for you. I'm going to do it big time. Big time. Everybody say big time. Big time. And say what God does, God does. He, does big. he does big. Amen. We don't serve a small God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he had to call, they had to call their partners so that <clears throat> they began to fill both boats and they, were at the, they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. It says, For he was gripped with bewildering amazement and all who were with him at the haul of fish which they had just made. All of a sudden, I mean, they were just like, uh, I mean, he was, he was dumbstruck. You know what I mean? Like, what do you even say to this? Like, all of a sudden he realized, and, and another powerful thing that we'll get to here in a second on this is that miracle, obviously also displaying God's power and who Jesus was, gripped him so much that he realized, I, I, I need to get my, I'm a sinful man. I mean, you know, he just started repenting. I mean, Jesus didn't even have to say, you know, you need to repent, Simon Peter, you know. No, it was, it was his, God's display of power and the blessing, you know, remember the Bible says um, in, uh, where is it? The goodness of God leads us to repentance. Romans, right? Romans 2. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And that's all Jesus did is he showed him his goodness. And then he was just like, uh, you know, I, I don't even deserve to be around you. Just, you, you need to leave me. <laughs> but yet Jesus, that, that didn't, you know. Peter's flaws and Peter's, you know, problems or whatever they were, that didn't, that didn't bother Jesus because Jesus saw something in them, him and his brother and his partners, that he wanted. And what did he say? He said, <clears throat> Have no fear, for from now on you will become fishers of men. And after they had run their boats ashore, they left everything and joined him as his disciples and sided with his party and accompanied him. That's when, they, that's when they began to follow Jesus. They're powerful. So Jesus blesses them so much that even their partners and, you know, the sons of Zebedee, and I thought it was actually quite amazing that not only did he bless them so much, that they had so much fish, and I don't know, you know, how they sorted it all out with their father. But basically, they were like, "Okay, hey, Dad, um, we're we're taking off with Jesus, and uh, sorry, but you know, here, guess what? Here's a great bunch of fish <laughs> to get you started with again. You know why? Because all of a sudden, he was taking their best help, probably. But Jesus even blessed his family, because obviously they didn't go walking around with bags of fish on their back. You know, maybe they had sold some, probably, and and took some of the proceeds, but. Obviously, that helped even his family business carry on. Isn't that crazy? But yet, they, on their best day in business, they left everything to follow Jesus. Because they couldn't, they were like, you know, we'd be crazy if we don't follow him. We have to follow him. We realize what kind of a, what kind of a, a man this is. Because I don't even know if they, at the time, believed that he was the son of God, but they knew he was a great teacher. They knew he was a prophet. They knew he could work miracles. So like, we better be following this guy. Amen. But that's what God wants to do for us. And, but so many times, you know, we look at, you know, what, what things look like in the natural and we're like, okay, Lord, you know, you don't understand. I've tried that. I've been there. I, I was just, I was just at it last night, you know, whatever. And it didn't work. But God's saying, no, 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 just go deeper. Go deeper with me. Just trust me. Put your trust in me. Go deeper. Watch what I'm about to do. Because if you just play in the shallows, you, guess what? There ain't a lot of fish in the shallows. But you've got to go deeper. You've got to get beyond what you're used to if you're going to see the breakthrough. Amen. Because it's there. It's waiting. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. You know, you, you just need to go deep. Lower your nets. Jesus knew where the fish were. I mean, it wasn't that he sang a song. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> Jesus already knew where the fish was. Jesus knows where your harvest is. It's waiting. 
but you won't, you won't come, you won't come uh, up on it if you don't do what Jesus says, if you don't go where he says go, if you don't do what he says do. It's all, why? Because it's all in the obedience. So God already has things lined up for us, but it's all in the obedience of what he tells us to do and where he tells us to go. It was the same when he turned the water into wine. They, all they had to do, Jesus, remember Mary said to him, whatever he says to you, do it, right? And they're all like, what? You know, fill it up with water. What is, how's water going to be turned into, you know, this, this wine for this wedding? This is crazy. There's a lot of things that God will ask you to do that's crazy. It was crazy for, <laughs> for me and my family to move all the way here where we didn't know anybody and didn't know anything about this town and start a church from nothing, from scratch. I don't even know where scratch what's involved in Scratch, but I mean, it was, sometimes it seemed like it was less than Scratch. <laughs> but look what God's doing already. Amazing things. Seen amazing fruit already. Lives touched, lives changed, people turned around, people healed, people filled with the Holy Ghost. It's been incredible. I mean, every week people are getting saved. It's amazing. But if I'd have been like, well, okay, God, you know, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. I actually wasn't even going to come to Hutchinson, even when God told me. I was just like, there's nobody here. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to go to the Twin Cities. You know, I'm just going to go over there. <laughs> and we actually did. We went in just kind of, you know, just to kind of check things out, you know, see what it's like. But for me, that was the shallows. This is the deep water right here. And then we're in the deep. And we're just putting out our nets. Amen. And the harvest is coming in. And the provision is coming in. Amen. Supernatural. I can't even tell you. I mean, just, it's just like on a regular basis. Just things happen. Thing in the mail. Here, there, wherever people show up. You know, we don't even know. We don't, and we don't call people. We're like, hey, would you, you know, would you help us? I, I haven't, you guys might have, I haven't called anybody to ask anybody for any kind of help ever. I don't need to. Why? Because God is my source. He knows. He sent me here. He knows what we're doing. Amen. And if, if, if it were even possible for us to fail, it would be on God. It's not going to be on me. Because I'm just going to do what he says do. Amen. And I said, wow, that sounds crazy. Yep, that's the kind of crazy faith you have to have to do crazy stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God is speaking to people to launch into the deep, to, to go beyond what you're used to, 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 to put away the, the reasoning of, well, God doesn't make sense. How can this work? Remember, God doesn't live in the realm of, we talked about it this morning, God doesn't live in the realm of sense and reason. He's in the realm of faith, the supernatural realm. Amen? Hallelujah. Caitlin, I, I, I wanted Caitlin to come and share a testimony. I don't think I've had you share a financial testimony recently, um, but I wanted to just come and share one of her testimonies real quick, and I believe this will encourage some people. Amen? And then we'll give you an opportunity to so. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I first started Bible school, I had, oh, I think most of you know, I just got saved. So I didn't know anything about giving or tithing or, you know, anything like that. So I basically would show up on Sunday, let the offering buckets pass me by, never put anything in it because I hadn't even, like, I, I didn't know why, you know, people were giving all of their money away. But um, I got to a point in my first year of school where I was calling my parents, who at the time were barely speaking to me because of this whole, like, 180 change in my life, asking them for rent money, because I didn't have rent money. Um, and I was working like 60, 70 hours a week, but I wasn't tithing off of my paycheck or giving, and so, you know, I was, I was completely lacking. But once I finally, like, Matthew 6, I, I, I grasped this, it says, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. 
Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I would sit and crunch numbers all day long. Okay, so I have this much gas to get me through this camp meeting. I have to drive to the church 15 minutes twice a day. It's gonna take this much gas. Like I, <laughs> I would go through everything. Um, and I never factored in giving. But once I finally grasped this scripture, I started giving here and there. I still hadn't gotten to the point of tithing yet, but I was giving here and there. And uh, I started to see breakthrough. I started to see like things coming in supernaturally. And uh, fast forward to my second year of Bible school, at this point I was learning to tithe and to give and to really believe the Lord for, um, for blessings, for income, for my finances, because I knew that at this point my job wasn't my source. And once I started to do that, my income actually doubled and I was working half the amount of hours. Um, and then I was like, okay, you know, maybe this actually does work. Maybe they, maybe they know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, so I started giving more, and I was tithing off of every paycheck, and I'm a server, so I was doing all the math on my tips and tithing off of it, just super excited to give. And then um, my income just kept coming in more and more and more and increasing more and more and more. And then in my third year of Bible school, I'm at the church 40 hours a week, and I'm only, like, physically able to work probably, you know, 25 hours a week, and that's maxing it out pretty much. And uh, I was comfortable. I was living comfortably. And uh, I basically got rebuked a little bit by one of the pastors on staff at the church. She's like, what are you actually working so much for? She's like, are you working to pay your bills or are you working so you have like a little bit of cushion, like you have some comfort? She's like, you're in internship, you're in the perfect will of God, so make sure that you're walking that out to the fullest and then, you know, your job. Like the Lord's gonna provide for you as long as you're walking on his, in his perfect path, so don't worry about, you know, work because it's all gonna work itself out. So it's like, okay, well, I'll cut it back to four days a week then instead of five days a week. Um, my income actually doubled when I did that. And I started to give more and more and more as I went on through my internship because at this point it's just it just became a lifestyle for me, like buying people coffees. Like I'd leave work and I'd send cash apps like, here's for your coffee on Sunday, just because it was it's exciting to give. It's exciting to know that you're being a blessing to someone else. You're able to be a blessing to somebody else. And uh in, I think it was March, or March, June, July, anyway, anyway, one month, I got back from um, a trip, I came here, and I ended up getting super sick for like a week, May, maybe, April, anyway, I got super sick, um, strep throat, ear infection, sinus infection, the whole nine, and Pastor Julia, I called her, and she basically told me I need to chill out and work a little bit less. So I cut back my day again. So I was now doing 40 hours a week at the church and working three days a week. Normally, if you cut back, you know, you, you lose some income. But my finances doubled yet again. Um, just being and putting everything that I had into what God had called me to do, which at that time was internship and being at the church and, you know, and, and growing in that area and, you know, going and doing crusades and things like that. And, and as long as I was fully focused on where God had placed me, everything else was completely taken care of above and beyond what I could ever have began to imagine. And instead of being comfortable and just paying bills and working to pay bills, I was, I had more than enough, like way more than enough, and it doesn't even make sense. Same with being here. I have more bills now than I think I've ever had, and I drive an hour to work, to work at Olive Garden, but I'm more blessed now than I think I've uh, ever been. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, I just got her up to share, you know, just because, you know, you guys hear from, from me all the time. 
that it works. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what your income. I mean, like I said, she was working like three days a week and God was supplying more than she needed when she was working, what, four, four or five days a week, five days a week. So it's like, it's not, it's not about, you know, what you can do in the natural. It's like, in fact, I was just reading earlier, you know, Proverbs ten twenty two says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. And it says, neither does toiling increase it. So it's not, it's not about, we, we don't, you know, we're not going to be abund- abundantly, you know, supernaturally blessed um, because of, you know, because we're putting in the extra, you know, 10, 20 hours, whatever. It's the favor of God. It's the blessing of God. It's just his, it's an obedience to what he tells us to do, where he tells us to go, when he tells us to sow, wh- who he tells us to help. It's in all those things. It's, it's, it's by the word of God. Amen. So powerful. And so, again, we, we teach these things and we encourage you because we want to see, I mean, you just extremely blessed. We want to see you just, you know, crazy, rise to the top, above and beyond what you can ask or think in everything. And God will give people, I know some people already have, you know, businesses and different things, but God will give people creative ideas and witty inventions. And, and God will, think about it, what if God could use you and give you an incredible business model that where you could put other people to work, yes. where you could be the one, you know, blessing people and getting to give people raises and things like that. Be incredible. Phenomenal. Just let God expand your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray, and you do what God tells you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for all your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've never let us down. Lord, that you've, you've never, uh, Lord, given up on us. Father God, we, we've never lacked anything, Father God. Any one of us, Lord, or we wouldn't even be here today. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have in mind, Lord, a great harvest for us. Lord, a net-breaking, boat-sinking load of provision. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, as we step out, Lord, to do what you ask us to do. Lord, we are going to see an abundant harvest in every way, shape, and form. Lord, we just give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, if you need an envelope... um, should be one near you on a seat. If you need one, let us know. We'll get you one. And I think everybody knows how this works. You can make up checks to the River MSP Church. Don't forget, if you are doing by way of debit card, don't forget to put your three-digit code from the back of your card on the envelope if you're doing that. Now, we, in fact, I think it was just the last week, I was hearing amazing testimonies. In fact, Jer had shared a couple of testimonies how he got a contract for, for um, you know, his uh, graphic design and stuff that he does on the side. And, and then one of the other guys um, uh, that, that comes here frequently, Ben, he was telling me about how he had a, I think it was a $400 bill wiped out, just totally like forgiven. And then you had one of those too, didn't you, Caitlin? A $450 bill uh, forgiven like a week and a half ago or something, two weeks ago. So it's like God's just doing Amazing, incredible things uh, around here. Amen. I think Bernie, you were telling me you got you got something forgiven too, right? Or was it or was it another contract that came through? I forget what it was. You told me a couple things. I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was now, but it was pretty awesome. It was the same week too that it happened with everybody else. It was amazing. So God is doing some exciting stuff. Amen. Exciting stuff. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, you can, whenever you guys are ready, you can come and worship the Lord. Amen. Worship the Lord and your giving. Hallelujah. And then we'll, then we'll pray and we'll go to the word. Hallelujah. Some supernatural things are going to happen tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to take a minute for a second. There you go. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, you
you can hold that too. So I felt uh, this last week as I was praying about what to share Sunday nights and Sunday mornings we're doing a little mini series right now on how to be led by the Spirit of God. And then <clears throat> Sunday nights I felt, and this might only take a couple of Sunday nights, but we'll see what happens here, how far we go tonight. But I want to talk about tongues, the gateway to the supernatural. Amen? Our heavenly prayer language. That, that heavenly language. Amen? So get ready. And God's going to do something. I know God's already, God was already doing something there, just even with the, the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues, even when we started, if you remember. That was, that was a word from the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's pray for a second. Father, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving upon this word. Lord Jesus, these are your words. Lord, for even your word declares that you became flesh, Lord, and dwelt, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so, Lord, we thank you that you would just even walk off this, the pages of this word, Lord, up and down in our hearts. That, Father God, you would give us revelation tonight, Lord, of your Holy Spirit living, moving, speaking through us. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for great breakthrough in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 here just for a second. And we see again where this first happened. But how many know God desires us to live in the supernatural? Because we're supernatural beings, amen? We, are, we, are not, we live in this natural body. But we are actually, we are spirit beings, first and foremost, amen? You are a spirit, right? You have a soul. You live in this body, which makes us supernatural beings, amen? We came from heaven. You know, we weren't just created from the, even though Adam was created from the dust of the earth, Adam's not, he wasn't, uh, you know, we're not just natural beings. We're actually supernatural beings. And the more actually that we realize that and have a revelation of that, the, the more victorious that we'll be over, over everything that we face. Why? Because you have to understand, what, what does the Bible say? Um, you know, in, in is it 2 Corinthians 10, right? It says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not, in other words, they're not natural. What are they? They're supernatural. And so if, we, if we're fighting, uh, 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 you know, it's different if when you're fighting a natural enemy, what are you going to do? You're going to get everything in the natural to come against that, right? You're gonna, and you're going to train, right? And just like, whatever you would have to do to be ready for that fight. But our fight is not a natural fight. It's a, it's a supernatural. It's a spiritual fight. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so we have, to, <clears throat> we have to know what those, what those weapons are, and we're going to talk about uh, one of those things tonight here. Amen? Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. That's a powerful one right there. One accord. I tell you, I felt that tonight. I felt that one accord here as we were worshiping. Amen? And that is, so, that is so key because if there's one thing the enemy wants to do is he wants to divide the church. He wants to divide the people of God. Why? Because you can't get things done when there's division, when there's discord, when there's, uh, when there's no unity. Amen? God wants his people, his body, because think about it, we are the body of Christ. He wants his body to be unified. Amen? regardless of church affiliation or whatever, because we are the body as a whole. Amen? And so I know it's wonderful. I know we have people here from different churches even tonight. Amen? So it's wonderful, though, that people can still come together. Amen? And worship and, and fellowship and be, uh, be built up in the things of God. Amen? And I know that's going to happen even more and more. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. I know <laughs> it's so crazy, actually. Was it? Was it last Thursday when I went to that pastor's um, luncheon here? And um, uh, not luncheon, but it was a, a, just a, we, it's a monthly ministerial thing that they do. And it was pretty awesome because I um, met, you know, some, some people that I hadn't met yet and, uh, and a few that I already had met. And, uh, and one of them was a, um, a pastor from the Methodist, one of the Methodist churches here. 
and um, there's a couple here in town, and this guy, uh, super nice guy, seemed really hungry for God. And in fact, he, he was like, man, we need to meet up and we need to talk and everything. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, I'd be happy to. So I'm like, I can't, I can't wait actually to meet up with this guy because anything we can do, amen, <clears throat> to help the body of Christ and to help people grow and to help other people grow into more uh, of the presence of God is just is phenomenal. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway, back to verse 2. Hallelujah. We didn't get out of verse 1 yet. Praise God. Good things are happening. And it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Hallelujah. There's a flame for every name. Amen. God wants, to, wants each one of us to be burning with his fire. Hallelujah. It wasn't just for the early church. It's for his church. Amen? Just like the Holy Spirit wasn't, it's not just for, you know, uh, some Pentecostal churches. It's for every single believer. Hallelujah. And I know we got a room full of Holy Ghost people here tonight. Amen. But it says, and it sat or it rested upon each of them. Amen? God wants his presence, his power to rest upon you. Not just to even to rest upon you, but, but for it to be in you and bubbling in you. Amen? And it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, <clears throat> we're going to talk tonight again about tongues being the gateway or the doorway to the supernatural. In other words, people say, you know, like, how, do, how do you get in the presence of God? How do you, you know, how do you begin to flow in the gifts of the Spirit? I tell you, one of the main ways is by learning to yield to the Holy Spirit and just praying in other tongues. And we're going to look at different things here that how this is so powerful and why we need tongues. Amen? Because a lot of people say, well, you know, denom different, de different denominations say, you know, tongues isn't for today. Uh, tongues is, you know, it was passed away. Um, or, you know, they say, well, you know, it, it, it passed away because it talks, you know, then 1 Corinthians 13 talks about, you know, love is a better way. Well, of course, love is the ultimate way. Love is what encompasses everything that has to do with God. You separate love from anything, and then you just have some other religion. Amen? But we're not talking about religion. We're talking about a relationship. Amen? In Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. So if you're a believer, he says, These are the signs that should be following. Amen? You know why some of these signs don't follow people? Because they don't believe. <laughs> true. It's true. It's really actually that simple. Because if you believe, what was it? Um, I think last Wednesday uh, at our HOJ, and actually I had Jared doing some teaching on, we were doing teaching on healing that night. And, um, but there was a scripture, or not a scripture, there was a quote that I read from E.W. Kenyon, that's who it was. And, um, and it said that, um, oh, how did that go specifically? I want to make sure I get this right. Do you remember what it was? It was, if I had my phone, I could look it up real quick. But it, it was basically... It's on Pastor Odonica's oh, post. Do you know where I am? Okay. Let me know when you get it. But it was so powerful because if you believe, you're going to act. Basically, if you believe, you're going to do it. Right? Why? Because you do the things that you believe in. Right? You're not going to really do something that you don't believe in. Amen? There it is right there. Yeah. It says, oh, that, that's what it was. I knew there was something really important about it. I love this. She says, I'm oh, sorry. He said, she reposted it. Don't try to believe, just act on the word of God. So simple, but so profound, right? Don't try, don't try to believe, just act on the word of God, because it's your act of faith that shows your belief. Amen. It shows that you truly believe. Amen. And as you begin to do those things, your faith actually grows in those things. Amen. Sounds pretty like, okay, well, yeah, that sounds pretty, pretty basic, but it's so profound. Amen. Stay with me. He says, These signs shall follow those that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. So God's saying, Believers should speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents, and they shall drink. And, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. That's why the devil has fought, you know, speaking in, in other tongues and these signs for so, for so long, for, you know, since the, since the, <clears throat> the inception of this. 
is because he knows when people get full of the Holy Ghost, supernatural things are going to happen. Supernatural signs and wonders are going to happen. And if, and if ever, <clears throat> I mean, the church is, the body of Christ has always needed the supernatural, obviously, but it seems like, you know, if ever we needed the power of God in manifestation, it's today. Because, and think about it, it's only getting like <clears throat> crazier and crazier out there where, because people are actually looking for supernatural things. It's like, you see these crazy shows, you know, I mean, they had this one, you know, for I don't know how many seasons called Super, it was called Supernatural. I hated that. I hated that with a passion because it was so demonic. And it was called Supernatural. When God is the author of the supernatural, not the devil. Not these weird, crazy, scary, spooky things. God's people. Amen. Yeah, I just noticed, like when we were watching the game today, you know, see this commercial for this, this show called Evil. That's the name of the show, called Evil. I can't believe it. Like primetime television, I'm like coming right into people's homes. I'm like... Yeah, then there was a show called Lucifer. I mean, it, it, it just goes from bad to worse. What is that telling you? It's telling you that we have, to, we have to display the power of God. Amen? That's why I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of speaking other tongues. I'm not ashamed of laying hands on the sick. I'm not ashamed of casting out the devils. I'm not ashamed of, of people getting filled with joy. Whatever. Why? Because we have to have it because people are looking for something that's real. Amen? Amen. And if we're ashamed of it, God will, God will pass us by and he'll give it to somebody else. Do you know, actually, it's so interesting, that when, when uh, the revival that was happening with um, Pastor Rodney in the ministry back in 19, that when it really broke out in 1989 and continued, and it's continued on, you know, even to this day, because they were crying out for God, just, God, just come and move in our services, Lord, do it, because their services were just like, I mean, he would preach the word and God would touch people and stuff like that, but, it, you know, it wasn't like, you, you know, you see today. And he was like, God, just come and do something, do something radical, God, whatever you want to do, right? And so when people started getting hit with the joy in the services, I mean, at first they were just like, oh my gosh, like, what, God, what is happening? You know, like, he was almost like, God, you're ruining my, my services, you know? <laughs> and, and the Lord actually spoke to him and said, son, the way your services have been going, they're worth ruining, you know? <laughs> so he's like, you know, do you want me to touch the people or not? You know, he's like, and so, and because basically he said, he says, if you're ashamed of this, he says, I'll take it away and I'll give it to somebody who's not. And he was like, and he had to repent. He was like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Please don't, don't take it away. Lord, do whatever you want to do, you know. And he had to just learn, you know, on the fly, really, how to flow with that and, and how just to let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wanted to do. Amen. And, you know, God doesn't always use everybody like that, but, but yet he will. He'll use anybody. He'll use any, he'll come in whatever way he needs to come. I'm just saying that, you know, not everybody's going to have, you know, you know, pretty wild and crazy meetings necessarily every single time. But you can. Amen. It's just, it's all up to what, you know, what are, what is, what is the, the man or the woman of God going to allow the Holy Spirit to do? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in 1 Corinthians 14, Verse 39, he says, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forget, uh, excuse me, forbid to speak with tongues. So, you know, there are people that say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's not for now, you know, or it's, it's not for Sunday morning. You know, you could, we'll, 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 we'll lay, you know, we'll get people filled with the Holy Ghost in the back room. Why wait in the back room? Why not get people filled with the Holy Ghost right out here <laughs> where, where, because I guarantee you there's other people sitting there that need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's going to encourage them to want to receive that. I remember when I first got filled with the Holy Ghost and I was, I was 12. Actually, it was at uh, Lake Geneva Bible Camp in Alexandria. And, um, and, you know, I don't even remember who the speaker was at that time. But he was talking about the Holy Spirit, I guess. And all I remember, you know, is he gave an altar call for people to come down front. And then people, there was people ministering to people, laying hands for people to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And I don't. Really, I mean, I was 12, you know, so I don't really remember actually a whole lot of that experience. But I do remember, you know, God touching me um, in, in a profound way. And I only really just got a little bit of my prayer language at that point. It was just, you know, I, I don't even, and I can't, I honestly, I can't even tell you what it sounded like. I don't remember. I just remember it wasn't, it wasn't very fluent, if you will. And, um, <clears throat> and so I remember, you know, I, I did that for a while. And then, but because I didn't really understand, you know, what I had, the gift that I had been given, I didn't, 
you know, I didn't really keep up with it and everything. And then, of course, I still went through this phase. But I tell you, obviously, God was really, God was really trying to prepare me because it was sometime after that that <clears throat> I started going through this rebellious stage and, you know, getting into trouble and getting into things I shouldn't have got into and all that stuff. So thank God the Holy Spirit, you know, was already working on me. But then it wasn't until probably years later, probably until I would have to say I was around 17, around about the time I think I received that I knew that God had called me to the ministry, that <clears throat> I really started doing that again. And then all of a sudden, when I just, by faith, just began to pray in other tongues, it just began to like really come. And it was like, it was like I almost had, you know, a whole nother prayer language. Amen. And, you know, there's some people I've heard that, you know, it's kind of funny, like when they pray in other tongues, it's, it's, so, it's almost like they sound the same every single time. And that's okay. You know, God, some, that's just how they have. That's what they've received. But there's, there's, there's even a new level in the area of, of praying in other tongues that God wants to take people to. If you've only just feel like, you know, like that's all you got. And I believe that'll happen for people tonight. Amen. If, if you need that. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I've heard that happen. I've heard that happen with many different people. Second thing. So <clears throat> it's the gateway to the supernatural. Second thing. Tongues is for supernatural communication. Again, in 1 Corinthians 14, if you're, if you're there and you can keep your finger there tonight because we're going to go back and forth there. But it says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. What mysteries? Secret mysteries, secret truths. Remember, we're not, we're not speaking to men. Amen? That's why he talks about, you know, through that whole chapter, he says, listen, he says, you know, I thank God that, that you all speak in tongues. And he actually said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. But he said, I also desire that you prophesy because... The one who speaks to in an unknown tongue speaks um, unto God to edify himself, but the one who prophesies speaks unto the church to edify the church. Amen? So we need both. He wasn't saying, remember, he said, we just read there, don't despise, uh, don't forget, you know, people to speak in tongues and don't despise prophecy. Amen? But it's because a lot of people don't understand uh, the, 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 the gift of tongues. And that's why people are so like, Oh, I don't, I don't know. Because there's some people that think, well, tongues should only be spoken of when there's an interpretation. But that's not what he said. He said, if there is a message of tongues, then pray for the interpretation. But he didn't say that you should never speak in tongues. Why? Because you need to. The Bible, like I said, Paul, then why would then Paul go on to say, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Amen. And we're going to get into a couple more of these things. But it's so important that we understand why we need tongues. Amen? He says, For no one understand him, however he speaks in the Spirit mysteries. So God understands what we're saying. It's like we have this, this personal hotline to heaven. Amen. Amen? Verse 18 there in 1 Corinthians, he says, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. You have your very own hotline to heaven. Isn't that powerful? It's it's wild when you think about it to think that, you know, all of a sudden God gave me this language that I can speak to God from. And when God wants to, to get a, a word to me, he'll download that word to me. He'll give you the interpretation. Amen. Yes. But there's a difference between diverse kinds of tongues with the interpretation and then tongues as your personal prayer language. Amen. And we need both. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need tongues even to praise. The third thing, supernatural praise. Again, in, in chapter 14, verses 15 through 17, it says, What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the, the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say. For indeed, for you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. So God wants us not only to pray in the Spirit, but to also sing with the Spirit, right? If you remember in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, he says, right? He says, singing to yourself in psalm, he says, talks about, you know, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit, Right? Be filled with the Spirit. Tongues is one of those ways that you get filled with the Spirit. 
You can get filled with this. Listen, you can get filled with the spirit just reading, <clears throat> just reading your Bible. Read chapter and chapter and chapter. I've gotten, I'm telling you, I've actually gotten drunk in the Holy Ghost just reading my Bible. That's, that's when you really know. I mean, it's just like, why? Because it's like God's just downloading things. You and you're just like, wow, this is unbelievable. Right? I, I literally haven't gotten beside myself. You can get drunk in the Spirit just, you know, praying to God. You can get drunk in the Spirit worshiping. Amen? And then God can just download supernatural Peace. You can get drunk on the peace of God. You can get drunk on the joy of God. You can get drunk on the love of God. But one of those ways that you can enter into all those things is through tongues. Amen? Because why? Because you can pray at tongues at will. Remember, the gifts of the Spirit, speaking specifically of diverse kinds of tongues and then, <clears throat> and then interpretation of tongues, are as the Spirit wills. But tongues is that, is that personal prayer language that, he, that every believer gets. Amen. When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, that you can pray at will. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. So we need to, you know, I never, <clears throat> in fact, I don't think I'd, to my knowledge, I don't think I'd ever encountered somebody singing in the Spirit, singing in other tongues, until I came to, to the Bible school in Florida. And, and I heard Pastor Roddy and, and some of the you know, people on the praise team singing in other tongues. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, if we can pray in tongues, we can sing in tongues, right? I'm like, what if I'm not really a singer? It doesn't matter, trust me. When you sing in tongues, it's just like, it's actually, it's like you become a singer, you know. It's powerful. <clears throat> in fact, I've learned, you know, I, I'm not really a singer, you know. I know that some people are. I am not one of them. But under the anointing, I can actually carry a tune. It's a, it's a miracle, really. But only when the anointing's on me. Otherwise, it just, like, I, like my pitch is just all off, you know. And I'm not saying it's all, yeah, it kind of sounds like that. Thanks, Don. Shh, quiet down. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm always on, maybe I'm always on key, but I'm telling you, it's just like, no, I'm telling you, you can, there's, why? Because it's, it's God's super, it's God's super that he puts on your natural. And there's all kinds of things that you can do by the supernatural power of God when the power of God comes on you. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, I mean, that's why you can understand things that you can't understand when, when the Holy Ghost is on you. You can see into the realm of the Spirit things that you can't see. You, obviously, you can't just see things. That, the only thing you can see in the natural is what your eyes can see. But by the Holy Ghost, you can see things to come, right? That's what Jesus even told us in the Gospel of John. So we need to practice those things. Amen. In fact, I think it was last Sunday night. We, we, we were singing in the, in the Holy Ghost for a little while. Right, Bernie? You, I heard you singing in the Holy Ghost. Weren't, wasn't it last Sunday night? You weren't? Maybe I was doing the singing then. Maybe it was me. Do you remember, Jerry? It was last Sunday night, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So I, I don't know. I get caught up and it all runs together for me. But it's powerful. And I'm, I'm telling you what, though. There's been, <clears throat> over the years, you know, oh my gosh, so many, so many years down there and so many powerful meetings. But, I mean, I remember um, several different um, meetings where we just, I mean, out of worship or even at the end of the service and we just went back into worship and we just started worshiping, you know, actual songs. And then we go into, like, singing in the Spirit and we would just, remember, we would just get lost in the glory of God for hours. I mean, just, I mean, I think we sang in the spirit like that for, yeah, well, because literally you do, you, your mind does just totally get switched off because remember, tongues comes from your spirit. It doesn't have anything to do with your head. And I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. It's just, it's like a flowing river, literally. That's why Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow forth rivers of living water. Amen. So I want to encourage people, pray in tongues more and more and more and more. Sing in tongues more and more and more. Say, what song do what song do I sing? Well, you you could pick a tune that you like and actually just sing in tongues to the tune, or you can just start off with anything and let God give you the melody. Amen. Just like people, how do you think God gives people songs? I mean, they actually <clears throat> they actually hear a melody. That's literally what happens. They actually hear a melody. Amen. 
And then they begin to, you know, twang it out or pound, you know, on the keyboard or whatever they whatever they do, whatever instrument they play or sing, or they just begin to sing it. And then obviously people with an ear for music, you know, know how to put it to a, write the notes or whatever they do. You know, I don't know, I'm not a musician, but, <laughs> but that's literally what happens. Amen. You'll get melodies. I'm telling you right now, God's going to give you melodies. Amen. Get ready. As you're playing, all of a sudden you'll, in fact, when you're not even playing, you'll begin to hear melodies of music, and you're like, what is that? And you just go start writing it out. Start writing songs. Amen. Powerful. Singing in the Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, there, there, there are so many, and, and the melody all, here's the thing, there's, this, is, this is why it's so powerful. Is the melody all comes from heaven. It comes from that heavenly realm. It comes from, remember, because this is a, a heavenly language. And that's what happens when we begin to pray in other tongues. We are tapping into that heavenly realm, and we are receiving from God Almighty. Amen. Because that's what Romans 8, 26, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but that's what Romans 8, 26 tells us. When we pray in the Spirit, because we don't always know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit comes in and he helps us because he prays in our behalf. He prays through us God's perfect will. Pastor Ronnie says it all the time, actually. He'll be in, he'll be in a meeting or whatever. And just, you know, it's like you can just feel the anointing of God just as he's just speaking. And he says, a lot of times he says, all of a sudden I just, I hear music. He says, he says, I hear music. And sometimes he turns around to see if somebody's actually on the keyboard or somebody and, and there's nobody. And he's just like, you know, he's just like, I hear it. I, I hear music. I don't know. I've heard him say that for years and years and years. I hear music. What is he hearing? He's hearing that heavenly sound. And that heavenly sound, trust me, when, when you're going through a tough time, when you don't know what else to do, the peace of God will come and you'll hear a heavenly sound that will supernaturally lift you out of Whatever the situation is, out of that problem, out of that funk, you know, out of whatever is going on, there's a supernatural sound that'll come. But how, well, how am I going to hear that? By, by practicing the presence of God, by practicing praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. How about this one? I think this is the fourth thing. Tongues is, gives a supernatural power. We just read, actually we didn't read this one yet, um, but Luke, <clears throat> Luke 24, verses 49, Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Remember, Jesus, he didn't tell him to go anywhere and do anything until you be endued with my power, until you be endued with my spirit. Don't go anywhere and do anything. Why? Because you have to have the power. Amen? You have to be equipped. As I said tonight, there's a, there's a supernatural equipping, equipping, <laughs> equipping that is taking place. And then, of course, right before he left, again, Acts 1, verse 8. But you shall receive, what? Power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. God wants us to be his witnesses. And tapping into the supernatural, tapping into the Holy Ghost is going to cause us to be that witness. I tell you, I mean, and, and, I, and honestly, I, I always, you know, it's, it's literally, it's not me, but it's the Holy Spirit who just reminds me all the time, just praying in the tongues, you know, especially if I'm not doing anything. A lot of times when I'm driving down the road in the car, just, Start praying in other tongues. When, and not just, you know, you, say, you might even be like, why am I praying in tongues? I don't even care anymore. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't have to know why. I just need to do it. Amen. Sometimes I know, like, okay, if I'm going to minister to somebody or if I'm going for an important meeting or something like that, you know, it's like, man, I definitely want to be, like, on my A game, right? I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost and God give me wisdom and everything, but sometimes just... For no other reason than I just need to build up myself spiritually. Amen. 
Hallelujah. When we just need to do that. Because we have to have that power. You know, and then it reminded me, you know, of, of Acts chapter 8. In fact, let me just go there real quick. I'll read it to you. Acts chapter 8. And then we're going to do some of our own praying in other tongues. Amen? Maybe some singing in other tongues. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In verse uh, 14. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> it says, Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard <clears throat> that the country of Samaria had accepted and welcomed the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And they came down and prayed for them that the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. Because if you remember, Philip went down and it says he preached Christ unto them. He preached salvation unto them, right? But it says um, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then the apostles laid their hands on them one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. And it says, however, when Simon, this, is, this uh, was Simon the sorcerer, when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> was imparted through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he says, uh, he brought money and offered it to them, saying, Grant me also this power and authority that in order anyone whom I place my hands on might receive the Holy Spirit. So he could see the power of God in action when the apostles were laying hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit. The only problem is his motive was wrong, yeah. right? And of course, Peter had to rebuke him and said, You know, your money perish with you. <clears throat> but we're empowered when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, and we're empowered. I'm going to tell you. You pray in the Holy Ghost, and how many know you, you sense the presence of God? When you pray in, in, in other tongues, you, like I said this morning, you know, it's like I feel like every time the, the anointing comes on me or the, the power of God comes in me, I feel like sh Superman. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, you feel like Clark Clint just kind of like, oh. Uh. And then all of a sudden, you know, you walk into that phone booth, right? And all of a sudden, it's like, shh, dun, dun, dun. You know, it's like you can do, it's like you can, dun, 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 right? You can do anything. I mean, literally, you feel like you're ready for anything. Man, I, I want to I be able to feel like that. Then you've got to practice yielding. Amen? Practice yielding to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because He's there. He's there for us. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've had, <clears throat> you know, many times I've, I've, uh, when I laid hands on people and I began to speak in other tongues, I've had people say, man, like, oh my gosh, it feels like fire. They're like, it feels like fire when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. I've, I've heard that, and I've heard that on, on more than one occasion, where people say that. It feels like, it feels like f electricity, what they say, electricity or fire. Maybe it was both um, at different times. That, you know, when, when, when you start praying in other tongues. Why? Because there's, it's a supernatural happening. It's a supernatural force. You know, Star Wars thinks they have the force. They don't have the force. God's people have the force. It's just that somebody actually like, you know, I, it wouldn't even actually surprise me. Really, it wouldn't even surprise me if George Lucas, you know, that one created, if he at some point had an encounter with God. It wouldn't even surprise me. Because how, see, you know, understanding actually what, the stuff that Star Wars comes out with, it's actually not far off from the real supernatural. It's not far off. They just think it's all, you know, about their internal whatever. And it's twisted. But there is a real force. Amen? It's the anointing. It's the power of God. How do you, you know, and people are like, oh, well, you know, you got to get into this meditation. No. I mean, to be honest with you, tongues is, is like a type of meditation. It really is. It's not where we have to go, mm, No. But we, what are we doing? We're yielding. We're practicing yielding to the Holy Ghost. We're, we, we are practicing yielding, getting into the presence of God. Why? Because that's where you receive wisdom. That's where you receive direction. You can get healed. That's why Romans 8, 11 says, If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, that same Holy Spirit will quicken and make alive our mortal body. Amen. When the Holy Ghost gets on you, you're going to get healed, even if you're not asking for it. That's what happened with you. You got healed and you didn't ask for it. I didn't know anything about it. You didn't say anything about it. Power of God just hit you. And a couple of days later, you're completely healed. Amen. The Holy Ghost did it. Amen. Amen. 
in the same night he got filled with the Holy Ghost for the very first time. It was powerful. He was saying, I feel like doing car wheels. <laughs> Amen. Incredible, eh? Powerful. And we've seen so many, we've seen how God changes people's lives the more that they yield to the Holy Ghost. How do I enter the Holy Spirit? Just begin to pray in other tongues. You say, I don't feel anything. You don't have to feel anything. I know people that have said, you know, well, you know, I have to wait till I feel the Holy Ghost to pray in other tongues. You know, no, you don't wait. You don't wait for a feeling. You, remember, it's by faith. I even said, you know, it's by faith that you enter the supernatural. And by faith, you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And then you feel the power of God. But I don't, I don't wait till I feel the power of God to pray in the Holy Ghost ever. I mean, I'm not saying sometimes I do feel the power of God. And then I'm like, oh, man, what's happening here? <laughs> Either way, but I don't wait till I feel it to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I just begin to pray. Hallelujah. Again, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, and we're going to pray here. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Jude 20 says, Beloved, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You want to energize your faith. It's like charging your, I always say, praying in the Holy Ghost is like one way to charge your spiritual batteries. Amen? Why? Because sometimes, you know, you just, you, you go through, even at the end of the day, you can be like, oh man, I just feel like drained, weak, you know. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You charge yourself right up. Amen. Why don't we just lift your hands right now and just, let's, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a couple minutes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Ho raba si ki ataradaba. Ma risti ki abrubo kushi ki ataradaba si. Me tererediri ese breba kataradaba su rebe tererediri. Ma riba su tererediri ya sakore be keshe tererediri ya bata. Mo reba ki ataradaba be shi elerediri ya sakataradaba. Ma raba salada. Ma to raba su parada Ma ti shi tererediri ya sakore be tererediri ya bato. Mamruko shur rebashim robokusete. Ah, Rebekele de Diasha de Dia Sabraba. Maribocuse Kele de Batara de Basiata. Eh, de Diashi Rabrute de Bando Rusapa. Matare de Restebaki in de Restaba. Oh, Reba Sumbre Batia. He led de Dia Sabrobocuse le de Dia Sambraba cam Rebeba Mabosu Rebekete. Mi ti di 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 wo 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 si am robo ko si ki ale de 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 di ya sebe i le de de di ya shu tu re ba su o re ba 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 tar mar ko so ko re ba 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 ma sin ke le de de di he de de di ya shi te de di ya bo ro bo ko to o thank you Lord for those Holy Ghost downloads thank you Lord Jesus o re shi te de de ya sa ka te. In Karania sinking did it in Sele de Mati am Robocote. He Tarabasa. O Reba soon did it. He king did it in Basso Reba Shiki motor rebete. He led it in the under at Abassandra de Baca. He le lambrande de Bassum Reba Candere. He Vriba soon did it. O Roco soon did it. O Kurish to did it in Yassi am Reba Soko de Robocote. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. A fresh fire, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. A fresh fire, Lord God. Oh, rica sun de 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 bati. Oh, corre ba 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 sun corrinca te. Iki ti de 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 esse. Even a fresh tongue. Hallelujah tonight, Lord. A fresh tongue, Lord Jesus. The fire of God. That's it. Just let that let that new language come forth. Oh, Oh, 
Hey, let your fire fall, Lord Jesus. Let your fire fall, Lord Jesus, on us. Let your fire fall on us, Lord Jesus. Ah, Robocoso Torobas. That's it. Consuming fire fall. There is nothing I want more than to carry your flame always and to carry your flame spirit move. We're hungry to encounter. Fresh fire, Lord Jesus. <laughs> a fresh fire, Lord. Fresh fire upon Caitlin, Jesus. Let the fire of God come in her hands, Lord Jesus. When she plays that, that instrument, Father God. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, Lord, come out of her mouth when she sings those words, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Fresh fire, Father, in Jesus. Fresh fire in Jesus' name. Shoo! That's it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People will be baptized in the Holy Ghost even when you play. Hallelujah, Jesus. You say, how do I get people filled with the Holy Ghost? Just like, like Acts 19.6. The Bible says Paul laid his hands upon them and they began to speak with other tongues and they prophesied. Just lay hands on them and say, receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure they're saved. <laughs> and then say, receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. It's not hard. Amen. Don't make it complicated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not filling their heads. We're filling their spirit. Amen. We're filling their spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Whew. Hallelujah, Jesus. <clears throat> yes. Oh, Rosata Rabba Shata Rabba. Oh, Rosur Rabba Shum Rasted. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, you're going to see supernatural deliverances when you lay hands on people. In fact, even when you speak to people, even if you can't lay hands on them, you say, God's going to set you free right now. In Jesus' name, you're going to see people set free. The power of God's going to come on them. i telling you, get ready. Get ready, expect it. Hallelujah. Was that a new tongue I heard, Bernie? Yes. I don't think I've heard you pray like that before. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's it. It's like shifting gears. That's exactly what it's like. It's like... <laughs> It's like going from first to second. It's, some, it's actually more like going from like first to fifth, you know. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did you feel that tonight? I think I heard, it was hard for me to hear, but I think I heard something. Did you hear it? Was it different for you? When, when you started praying even more? Well, keep yielding. Sometimes it will come. It will come. Even Pastor Danica. She got a, I remember, what was that, back, like back in 2003, 2004, in one, of the, in one of the camp meetings we were having, she got a new tongue, and it actually sounded like Chinese. It sounded like she was praying in Chinese. 
And it was the most amazing thing. And like, it was like that whole week, she prayed in tongues like that. For, and on and off, yeah, sometimes it's, it's like, sometimes you hear it like that and sometimes you don't. It's, it's just funny. But it's just like, you, the more you yield to the Holy Ghost, you know, it's like, well, why? Why, why does it sound different or why? I don't know. It, you know, you have to ask God. Amen? And God will give you. It, exactly. It's, it's part of going to the next level. That's really what it is. But you say, well, what, what's, the, what's the fruit of it? Well, you'll see it in the days and the weeks and the months to come. Not necessarily, you know, you, you could see, you know, things happen to people, obviously, here in the, in the services. But sometimes you don't see the outworking of it until you're out and about and doing what you do or doing what God's called you to do. And you begin to, you begin to feel it and you begin to see it happen. And it even can come through your work, whatever you do. It, translate, it translates into whatever you do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a fresh anointing. It's a fresh anointing. <laughs> How are you doing there? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. A fresh anointing. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we got to get everybody filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? You say, well, what if they, what if, you know, it doesn't seem like there's that great of a change, you know, right away. Just, you just keep working with people. Amen? You just keep, that's why they need to be filled and filled and filled again. Amen? Like Pastor Ronnie always says, he says, you know, the lo- he says, one thing I know, he says, the longer that you're in the anointing or under the anointing, he said, the more that you'll change. And I found that to be true for myself. I mean, even when I first came to Bible, even though I was in love with God and everything, I mean, there was, this, there was definitely some things God had to do in my heart, even towards, you know, some, some people that I was close to. And just really do some, do, do some healing and do some work, you know, inside and everything. And I tell you, it, it totally changed me. I mean, having hands, I mean, because they would lay hands, whether it was Pastor Artie or one of the other pastors or one of the other evangelists that would come through regularly, um, yeah, they would lay hands on us. It's, I think about every service, as, as I remember. And I tell you, and that <clears throat> I know that that helped change me without a doubt, without a doubt. But that's why I lay hands on you guys all the time, amen. Because I know, and I can see it. I've I've seen it. I've seen it in you. I've seen it in you. I've seen it in you. I'm even seeing it in in you guys, amen. And we know what already happened with you guys seen it in, I mean what was it it was so funny when you shared last time you were here she she told us that she said when she first started coming here and she was coming pretty regularly on Sundays and, and some Wednesdays and stuff she said people would ask her like what's what's going on with you are you dating somebody she thought she you know there was somebody there was some new flame in her life or whatever but she's just like no I'm just in love with Jesus you know she, and you could just see it from the glow on her face so people will see something different. They're like, what's up with you? What's going on with you? I'm just in love with Jesus. That was so awesome. I love that. Powerful. Powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. So I've got more, but we'll, we'll, we'll do part two next, next Sunday night. Hallelujah. So don't miss out if you can. Powerful. Powerful. God is so faithful. He's so good. Good things are happening. Amazing things are happening. In fact, uh, so David and Kristen, they weren't here today because they're down in Florida, actually, on some vacation. And so they went to the river in Tampa this morning. And he, he said he answered the altar call just because he wanted to get extra prayer. And... Uh, and so I don't know if it happened. I didn't get. I haven't gotten the full story yet. He was just texting me a little bit this afternoon, and he was saying. He said God really put it in his heart. He's like, I want to win some souls. I mean, he's just excited. And he's like, I want to start Bible school when I get back. So he's planning on starting the classes in January. It's so awesome, so exciting. And so we're doing that. It should be like the first full week of January is, is when we'll start on Monday nights and Tuesday nights from about six to nine, and uh, we're going to be doing about three classes a quarter. And um, so it'll be three classes Monday night and then the same three classes um, 
Tuesday night for that quarter. And then the next quarter we'll do three more classes. And, um, and then there's going to be a fee involved in everything, but it's very minimal. It'll be only like $200 for the semester and um, $400 for the whole year. So when you start up, if you start up again in August, but uh, powerful. It's going to be so awesome because it's the same stuff we teach in Tampa, exact same stuff. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. Bless you. Our God is, God's given us favor with the, with the rec center that we're going to be able to use. I got a call last week, and this lady was like, hey, I just felt to, to help raise some money for Toys for Tots. And she didn't know anything about what we were doing. And, uh, and so she's like, I heard you wanted to use the rec center. She's like, well, hey, listen, she says, I can get it for half price. And then she says, on top of that, I'll just pay for whatever that half price is with some of the money that we raise from the donations. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, they're just now offering it to me. And because I had actually looked into using it, and then I actually never responded because I thought, oh, man, I'm going to have to jump through all these hoops. Like, just forget it. I'll just meet here, you know, just use this room. But I think God's trying to tell us something. It's going to be big. It's going to be bigger than what we can handle here. And uh, so it's, it's really exciting what God is doing. Oh, and then I know there was something else I wanted to mention. Um, in fact, where's my phone? Just so I don't forget. About it. And then we did, uh, how many of you heard about our, our all-night prayer meeting that we had um, last month? So amazing. You, you got to come out if you can come even for a few hours. Um, it was, I mean, so many powerful things happened there. She was drunk in the Holy Ghost, laughing uncontrollably for like over two hours. It was amazing. We had... Um, one of the other young men that came from the boys home, he got saved. He came like after midnight, he got saved. And then the other three that were there, they were there until like what, three in the morning, wasn't it? Something like that, two thirty, three in the morning. And because um, we went from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m., 12 hours. And what we do is we hook up with <clears throat> the all night prayer meeting that's happening at the river in Tampa. And so, and they do kind of like hour by hour. They kind of do a different prayer topic every hour. And so the get up will actually start with like a couple songs of praise and worship. Worship the Lord for a little bit. Then somebody comes up and, and prays along the lines of that prayer topic. And then people just go into praying in other tongues for like the next 40, 45 minutes. So amazing. And then the, at the next hour, they come up. We, we just start worshiping again um, for, for about, you know, 10 minutes or so. And then we go into the next prayer topic. It's amazing. But so many things happened, and then Stacy was telling us that she came up to me, and she's like, she's like, oh my gosh, she's like, when I was just praying there, she said, there was this white light that came and like went right into my eye, and I was like, wow, like what happened? She's like, I don't know. She's like, I just feel this heat in my eye, and I was like, well, did you have eye, you know, could you see well before? And she says, no, not really, and I'm like, well, how, you know, I was like, we were standing at the back. I said, can you see the words on the screen now? She's like, yeah, I can. <laughs> so like, God healed her eye. Nobody even touched her. And, um, and then, oh, yeah, and then your back, you were having pains in your back. Your back got healed. And it seemed like there was something else that happened. I can't remember what it was. But there was a lot of amazing things that happened that night. So I want to encourage you. So the next one's going to be Friday night, um, December the 6th. And we meet just actually over, we'll probably be again in the other room, the old restaurant building of the hotel here, right over there, just to, when you come in to the right. Um, so 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I just encourage people, you know, like even if you only come for a few hours, come as long as you can. But we had, in fact, one of the other boys, Landon, he stayed with us all the way through to 5 in the morning. He stayed the whole time. He was, in fact, the other three wanted to stay, but they had to go because they had to get up early in the morning for some kind of group appointment or whatever. So they couldn't stay. But they were actually upset. They're like, we want to stay. <laughs> and it was, oh, it was amazing because Bernie had them reading the Bible. Oh yeah. I tell you, because I laid hands on them, and they were really getting touched. And then they were sitting around. She had them sitting around and reading the Bible as we were praying. It was, yeah, to each other. Read, read like the whole book of Ephesians. It was powerful. So, yeah, it was phenomenal. So it's exciting stuff. God's doing some awesome things. And then, um, hallelujah, house of joy. Yeah, we talked about that, and I think everybody else knows about that. So amazing. You know, God's powerful things her granddaughter has been coming and she brought her her boyfriend and a couple other friends and they got saved Wednesday last Wednesday night and so yeah I'm telling you 
You come and you're not born again, you're getting saved before you leave. That's just what happens. Amen. It's, it's awesome. No, because, I mean, the power of God starts touching people, you know, from the praise and worship and everything, and then, you know, we just begin to pray, and then if I don't do it, if I don't even lead everybody in prayer, I'll just walk over to people and be like, sense the presence of God? Yeah. They're like, yeah. They're like, have you ever given your life to Jesus? No, I don't think so. You know, would you like to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just lead them into prayer right there. You know, we just get them saved right there. It's amazing. It's amazing. And when people meet Jesus, you know what I mean? When they encounter Jesus, why would you not want Jesus? You know, how could you resist him? He says, we have to, we have to introduce the power of God to people. Amen? And whatever, in whatever way we have to do that, you know what I mean? Don't, don't get rigid about it. Don't get mechanical about it. Just, you know, I know we use, you know, a gospel soul in the script, and it works because it just brings people to a point of, you know, they hear the gospel, and the Holy Ghost is the one that came up with that. I'm telling you, it was incredible. Because it's just simply, you know, three simple scriptures, and then let me pray for you. And you begin to pray for people, and they sense the presence of God. And then they're just, you know, you say, hey, you want to make sure that Jesus is your Lord and heaven will be your home. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus. Amen. It's awesome. We're going to do a whole soul winning. That'll be one of the first classes um, in January is on soul winning. And we're going to start some. Amen. And uh, Caitlin's going to help us and do take people out on the streets, do soul, practical soul winning training and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to start doing it, really setting some times up on a, on a weekly basis for people to go, you know, because, you know, you work with, now, yeah, yeah, we can, yeah, we're going to start now. So we need to just set it up when you get back, um, whenever we can do it. Yeah, I'm, we got to do it. So, yeah, hurry back. Amen. So we'll, we'll take people out. I'll take guys and she can take ladies and it'll be awesome. It's exciting stuff. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost party. Oh, they're out all the time. And the Mormons are out all the time. And we have something that's actually the truth. Amen. Now why should we be spreading the truth? Absolutely. And we're not interested in religion when we're going to introduce them to Jesus. Amen. People are, and people are going to get healed. You know, they're going to get healed and they're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. They're going to encounter the presence of God. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be exciting. And people are going to be like, man, something's different. Something's different about you. Yeah, it's the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's actually what the Christian norm should be. It's what the Christian norm should be. Amen. Hallelujah. It was the book of Acts. So the book of Acts was all about going everywhere, preaching the gospel, signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It seems so late, but it's only, it's only quarter after eight. I'm like, well, it's actually early. God is so good. God is good. You guys been blessed tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Those of you watching by way of television, God bless you. Come join us here Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., Sunday nights, 6 p.m., House of Joy, Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Contact us for location. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>